To the children of Palestine, I'm sorry that we have failed you, but I promise. I had the privilege and opportunity to write a note and donate a Quran to Mashar al-Aqsa for future generations. The note I left was a testament to my experience of Palestine from Zakaria Osman Abbas and family of Canada and Guyana. To the children of Palestine, we are with you. December 21st, 2022. Right. We're dropped off in the streets of Philistine. Okay, first things first, we eat. So I'm staying in the Rivoli Hotel. This is pretty nice, actually. So this just happened. My GoPro clip broke. Damn, this is so crucial. How am I gonna find another one in Palestine? Off to Al Aqsa off the Fajr through the Herod's Gate. Five o'clock in the morning, it's a little chilly. But we out here. We out here. Into our Lexa compound. We go. <laughs> is done. I'm just gonna go kick it. The weather is a little chilly but sweater weather and it's just beautiful. I had the honor to visit your beautiful home, to experience your vibrant culture and welcomed with love. But really it was the presence and liveliness of you the children that really captivated me. Before I went to Palestine I had this impression of a war-torn, depressed society, but I was wrong. I was encountered by you, the young generation, with strength and life, kicking ball, chasing birds, and running through the streets, looking forward to growing up, looking ahead to a bright future, just like I did, just like all kids do. I went for Isha prayer the night before at Al-Aqsa and I met a couple Moroccan brothers from France, amazing guys, around my age as well, and we kicked it off right away. In fact, around the table for some local Palestinian shawarma, we planned to venture outside of Jerusalem and take the local public transportation to meet a local guide in Bethlehem. Go. Oh my god, one more time through the gates, and we're out. So we found a brother to give us a tour of uh, Palestine. So he picked us up from the bus station and uh, we're gonna go drive around Fasli inshallah. If you can Banksy no, if you want to see we can. Inshallah okay. Okay, it's good. Must be Yusuf. Off we go. Yusuf. Bank is Palestine, I mean Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Hebron, Jericho, Ramallah, it's West Bank. Every city in the West Bank, an example Bethlehem now Bethlehem three area like this A, B, C The city center in Bethlehem, you can see now Just the three percent zone A in Bethlehem Under the Palestinian control Okay Okay No Jewish, no colony in zone A Okay Just Palestinian people On the round zone A, zone B is 27 percent This is mixed control and who lives in zone B? Just Palestinian people. B under the Israeli security. Okay, it's mixed control, but the security for Israel. A, no. A, before Israel's security to come there, it's very important to call to Palestinian security. Okay. And normal in after one o'clock in the morning, we take somebody to the jail. It's a crazy situation. It's not easy to understand this. Look, 70% zone C is completely under the Israel's control. Okay. It's in zone uh, C, mixed people. Some Jewish settlement and Palestinian religion. Zone C. Every city like this. The Shaheed that were uh, killed in this refugee camp. We will win, inshallah. Oh. What you can do Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because of... Now I tell you before, we have more than 7 million Palestinians live in the outside. Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Gaza, West Bank, live in the same Big problem between Israel and Palestine and these people. We will come back. Yes. But Israel, you tell you this is possible. Every Palestinian, he leave his house before 1914, he take house of key for him. House key. Because he want, he want come back. The United Nations before, he promised these people, when the war is finished, really? he will come back to, the, to his house. Uh. And built for him some refugee here, some tent. Now it's more 66, 68 years now. Now Israel, uh, we have the famous woman in Israel, it's called is Golda Meir. In 1948, she says something. The old people is died, the young people forget. <laughs> But okay, the old people is died, okay, but the young people is not don't forget. forget. Mm. Everybody, he tell you this is my house key, I want to come back to my home one day. Not me, my child. Not my child, another child. child. But the next, I want to come back. Right. This was the meaning not for sale. Israel is ready to pay to these people, what do you want? Put mm. the number, what do you want? Oh. Just forget. Not for sale. To come back to your home, to your land. This is a story of a 13 year old Abdurrahman was killed. Oh. Oh. <laughs> This will wake you up. It's without sugar, you know. It's sugar. Oh yeah, we know. Israel starts with this wall after the second intifada. The second intifada starts in 2000. In 2002, Israel starts to build this wall. This wall and around Jerusalem. Jerusalem city before this wall, small city like this. After this wall, Jerusalem like this. Now. This wall kept a lot of Palestinian land. How long this wall, you think? 700 kilometers. 700 kilometers? This wall is not finished, Israel is still building. After this wall, it's easy for me to visit everywhere in the world. French, Europa, Americans, everywhere. But not easy for me to visit Jerusalem from here 10 kilometers. Banksy artwork, 2017. If I decide to just to visit Jerusalem, example for the old people like me, it's very important to me to do three things. First, your age is more 50, 55. The second, your life is clean. Is clean? I mean, I am not terrorist. Hmm. I'm not make a problem with the Jewish people. The third. This is important to make electronic ID, the Jewish electronic ID, like this. Hmm. Now I can go, how I meet you behind the borders? Hmm. I go to the, to the checkpoint now to put this is in the machine. If everything is good for me and the camera to see my face, what? to give me green light, the gate is open. Hmm. I can cross and go by bus, not by taxi. By taxi now I give you each person hundred, no no two hundred. I give you each person million euro. <laughs> mm. If you help me to cross by my taxi to Jerusalem to take you there, it's impossible. Well, Banksy he visited Bethlehem uh, three times. Okay. In 2005, 2007, yeah. and 2017. Okay. And more one time in 2014, Banksy in Gaza Strip. So this is real artwork by Banksy himself. This picture is in 2005. Banksy shop. Oh. What? This picture. 
Banksy? Yeah, of course, it's the famous this one. This is Banksy? Wow. wow. Banksy. This is nice they built a store around this Banksy artwork. And then they kept it behind the glass. A couple souvenirs for the road. And that's the Banksy art. <laughs> Sit down, brother. Take care. Hold on. Literally at the side of the car wash in Palestine, you have this. Banksy! Banksy 2005. My boy, I think it's good. Friend, thank you so much, honestly, for everything. I know it's only been a day, but I feel like we've known each other forever, you know? Inshallah, Inshallah, we'll come in uh, For sure, brother. You take care, brother. No, I'm doing this care. Thank you so much for everything, honestly. Okay. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Inshallah, I'll see you guys either in Paris or yeah. I see you in, in Toronto. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, for sure. Inshallah, I got you guys on Instagram. We'll, we'll keep in touch. We don't have connection now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be careful. Take care yourself. Yeah, sounds good, brother. Thank you very much. Take care, brothers. Oh my God, it's over. All right. That is my journey. That is the end of my tour. Like, I am not the guy to take public transportation. But out of all places in the world, Al-Steen is where I will hop on the public bus. Quite, it's quite an experience. And I'm not gonna lie, my brothers and friends, I'm gonna miss them. I'm gonna miss them a lot. But the reality is that we live different lives, we live worlds apart, and it kills me inside. It kills me that your reality is a struggle to survive, and our reality is a struggle to live. Your oppression comes from an apartheid regime, our oppression comes from social media, your pains come from losing your loved ones, our pains come from losing ourselves. We experience your reality from the horrendous images and videos that we see posted online. Our heart aches, our anger rages. Then we swipe up and continue on with our lives. It feels hypocritical. It's not fair that I can scroll reality away, but you can't. I feel hopeless to see a genocide targeting you when you haven't done anything. It's not fair. It's not fair that you have to pay the price for evil and injustice. It's not fair that your childhood has been wrongfully taken away. It's not fair that many of you will not grow up. The first day I came, I was warmly welcomed by a young Palestinian brother, Khalid. Born and raised within the walls of old Jerusalem, he lived and experienced what we only see on the news. And he offered me a tour of the compound. This is one of the places where Prophet Zakaria made dua. Yeah. So you see, this is Mihrab oh, of wow. Zakaria. So he was normally, you know, very famous in his dua. So if you look at the top of the Mihrab, you see the dua. The dua there? Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's the member of Salahuddin. Salahuddin Ayyubi. You know, Salahuddin Ayyubi, when he opened the place in 1187, yeah. 900 years ago, he made three members. One here, one near the dome, and one in Hebron. You see the member here, it's not the original one, you know the reason why? Mm. Because Australian Jewish person, when he came, there is an Australian doctor, 1969, he came for no reason, for no clear reason, and he burned the member. So you see the member here, it's a replica. And now you see they put glass and they put uh, security. If you look okay. at the roof of the masjid, yeah. it looks different. Why? The question, why this roof looks different than this side yeah. of the roof, and look different from here, and look different from there? The answer is the masjid was made bigger and bigger, it was fixed many times, make it bigger. So starting with here, this section is the original section. Like the middle? No, the original section oh, is that okay. section. And then <coughs> Walid bin Abdul Malik, the son of the person who made the dome, mm -hmm. he make it tell the pillars we see here. Oh, okay. And he joined it with the dome, he put the dome in the top also. Oh, okay. And later on, Salahuddin Ayyubi in 1187, he make it tell the pillars we see here. And that's why the roof looks different. This is by Sahidin. Yeah. And then last uh, 
you know, last last thing, the Ottoman Empire, they make it till we see it till our days. Oh, okay. So the Ottoman Empire, they are the last Muslim empire here, like this. Inshallah, one day it returns to Islam. And, Inshallah. Uh, you see here on the windows, this window was broken last Ramadan. Oh. You know, the media, they don't never show this. Oh, yeah. They will always show that they are democracy, you know, the occupation here. But look, when the Ramadan, last Ramadan, what they did, because the Jews, they couldn't enter the police from the doors. Yeah. Because the local, they closed it. So they went in the roof of the masjid. No crazy, way. Crazy. They went in the roof of the masjid and they tried to, to do bullets in the people from the top. What? Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine windows from the top broken? was broken. This Ramadan, 2021. No way. Mashallah, you see this is the original masjid. The original? Yeah, the old masjid. Like from, uh, you're saying from Prophet Suleiman's time? Yeah, so you know, the, I'll show you why I take, you know, the ulama say that. Because the rocks inside is impossible built by humans. The original Aqsa. Um. Many people when they come from outside, we don't visit. Yeah. Not because they don't want, but they don't know there is a they masjid don't know. here. Yeah. Because I, you know, from outside, this looks just like no, there is nothing here. But when you go, there is a masjid fit for 3,000 people, which is this mosque. That's crazy. And there is the masjid Marwani on that side, yeah. 9,000 people. Really? Un underground? Also underground. Wow. So they say, like, uh, this masjid was built by... Uh, the jinns of Suleiman. The jinns of Suleiman. You know, because Suleiman alayhi salam, he used to control the jinn, control yeah. the wind, yeah. speak with the animal. All of that is just power from Allah. For sure. You know, Suleiman alayhi salam, when he was a young, when he was young, yeah. he made dua that uh, he was, you know, not like us when we make dua, we make dua for small things. Hmm. You know, give me a car, may Allah give me. <laughs> give me a good wife. Yeah, look, <laughs> Suleiman alayhi salam, when he was young, he made dua that Allah give him power, but has been given for animal, for really? him and after him. You know the dua of Suleiman, how much it was powerful. Hmm. Because what? Because he believed in the power of Allah. Yes, he was young, 18. He was young. He, Allah oh. gave him like power, like controlling the wind, controlling the jinn. Yeah, yeah. He could uh, control the animal and speak to them. You know, when they was asking the jinn to do them something, mm -hmm. they do it like easy. Like you see the rock, how big is it here? Wow. See? It's uh, for our today, it's uh, something impossible to carry without machine, right? Like this is one rock. This is one piece of it. No way. There used to be no electricity, right? Mm -hmm. So how they used to light the masjid? With the olive oil that people used to send. Especially after the hadith of the Prophet. Yeah. There's a very famous hadith say that you should come and visit Masjid Al-Aqsa. Mm -hmm. And if you, in, uh, in case, you know, you, don't, you cannot come and visit, then at least, at least send a bottle of oil. Okay. So people, when they don't have opportunity to come, they used to send olive oil with people who can come. Yeah. And they used to bring it and put it in this way. But since the electricity started, they don't use anymore now. Here, next to the Mall Rock, there is a small dome. Yeah, I was looking at that. So that small dome is the model. The more model. So before they make the Dome of the Rock, yeah. the big design, they make small one for testing. For because every calculation. I will tell you about how they build the dome. Please. Yes, so Abdul Malik bin Marwan. Yeah. Abdul Malik bin Marwan, 75 Hijri, he bring the best engineer to build the dome. Okay. So, you know, inside the dome, there is very special things. Like, there's four doors symbolizing the four seasons of the year. Oh. There is 12 windows from the top symbolizing the 12 month. And inside the dome, wow. if you count the pillars, you find them 52 pillars mm -hmm. symbolizing 52 the 52 weeks. weeks. In the year? Wow. Yes, and the height of the Dome of the Rock is 36 and a half meter. 36.5? Yeah, 365? symbolizing the 365 days of the year. Wow. Yes, and also, you know, there is written from the top outside of uh, the Dome, Surah Yasin. Going around? From there, all the way around. Wow. They could finish the Surah in the last year. Wa ilayhi turja'un, the last of the Surah. And uh, you see the Dome. It's made by Abdul Malik bin Marwan, and mm -hmm. you see the gold in the in the top of the dome. Yeah, it's uh, by uh, you know the women of Palestine on that time. They have the idea of you know each woman take a little bit of the gold and they collect it. They make it water, you know, a piece of gold, yeah. seven kilograms. They make it water, you know, with hot. They make it water, water gold, and they paint it around the dome. Under it, yeah, iron. Yeah, the, that's the place where the Prophet Muhammad says, I went to the seven heaven. From. Oh, huh. see this wall. Yeah. This is where Salahuddin entered from to Masjid Al Aqsa. Oh. Okay. That's why you see there is a way. Yeah. There is no door. Why there is a way and no door? Oh. 
for Salahuddin. Yeah, because Salahuddin, when he came, uh, he chose this wall because on that time, this wall, it, it wasn't very high. Mm. This is the room of Imam Ghazali. There? This, you know, Imam Ghazali wrote his book. Yeah, wow. Kitab. So they put a masjid? Yeah, now, you know, on that time they built masjid for him. Yeah, It was true. his room. This is the way Imam Ghazali stood. Wow. And he wrote his book, Ihya Alum Indian. But you know, the Jewish, they tried to take this room. Because really? The, yes. I remember like in 2018, there used to be a, a gates here. No Muslims? And, uh, and wasn't used, wasn't active. That's why the, what the Jewish say, we say, we take it, we look after it. Mm. So this is the main thing I would I was need to show you. Yeah. This is the main thing. Uh. You know the problem, most of people think, as is Laksa, it's dangerous. Mm. So this idea, I make the most empathy. Yeah. You know, because they think it's always uh, dangerous, so they more. don't come. But you know, slowly, slowly, I feel more people come because the people, uh, you know, one, they, they tell other one, you go back. Exactly. And people start coming, you know, not like before. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people are scared, but I'm here. I mean, a lot of people said you're crazy to come here. I'm going to tell you that. A lot of my friends, mm -hmm. but uh, yes, you know, the media, the media make yeah, the people who come look like crazy. But it's okay. It's more than peaceful. Yeah, no, this place is you know, beautiful. Everywhere happen problems, even in England, Canada, Europe. Happen like I thought, problems. I thought there's Jewish people walking around in here, uh, making Muslim. trouble. Yeah. Oh. They can come and they can walk in the courtyard, they can... But oh. this is closed off to Muslims only. Yes, it's just for Muslims. So like when you're here, you really feel like... You're, you're in a haram kind of, like, you know? May Allah make it like this always. But they are afraid of you. They're afraid of your potential, your willingness, your faith, your strength and courage, even when there is nothing left. That's why they spend millions on all this tactical gear and armor to make them feel powerful, to try and cover their weakness. Even Fir'aun, one of the worst people to ever walk this earth at the time of Prophet Musa, he also targeted and killed children, owing to the fact that they are cowards, weak and afraid. We sit here scrolling and talking and promising while we continue to indulge in life. It may seem that you need us, but the reality is that we need you. We will not give up on you. We will continue to protest. We will continue to boycott. We will continue to fight however we can. But I believe that the real struggle and support, the real difference we can make come from within. The biggest impact I can make is on myself and I will not let your pain and suffering go in vain. When I first left from Jordan for Palestine, I met a couple of Mauritian brothers from France in the bus. Amazing guys, all around the same age as me, and we chatted about crossing the border and hoping for a smooth process. Unfortunately, we all ended up getting detained at the border. Our passports confiscated, firmly interrogated by the IDF, then eventually released after multiple hours with an Israeli visa on a small slip of paper. However, my Mauritian friends were nowhere to be found, so I continued on alone. Fast forward to Isha the next day, and I run into them at the Masjid Al-Aqsa. We reconnected and shared our stories about facing the IDF. Then they invited me on a mission. An old uncle at the masjid invited us to join him for an all-you-can-eat buffet on the other side of town. A little suspicious to say the least, but we put our trust in the Lord, hopped in the car with him, and took off. We pulled into a very fancy hotel that was hosting some sort of event. We walked right in and straight to a world-class buffet. We couldn't believe it. When we figured out the situation, we were at the World Judo Masters in Jerusalem 2022, and that old uncle from the masjid, he was the head coach for the Turkish national judo team. In the year 637, Jerusalem was conquered by the Rashidun Caliphate without bloodshed under condition that Omar bin Khattab himself accept the surrender. When he arrived, the Patriarch of Jerusalem, Sophronius, invited Omar to pray inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. However, he declined as he feared that the status of the church would eventually be endangered. So he performed his prayer in the courtyard instead. Built in 1193 under the Ayyubid Caliphate, Masjid Omar stands as a commemoration to the covenant, the prayer, and the conquest of Jerusalem by the great Sahaba Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. Because of you, I promise to be better. I promise to strengthen my faith as you have showed me strength. 
I promise to take care of my parents and family as you have lost yours. I promise to be grateful for peace and life as yours have been taken away. I promise I won't waste as you suffer from loss. I promise to be good to others as you have been good to me. I promise to be better as you have showed me what it takes. To the men and women, young and old, suffering from this atrocity, you are all the children of Palestine. This Ramadan 2024, I will be better because of you. I will make dua, I will give in charity, I will unite, I will do good, and I will not let your pain and suffering go in vain. حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل إليك نشكو ضعف قوتنا وقلة حيلتنا وهواننا على الناس يا أرحم الراحمين أنت رب المستضعفين وأنت ربنا إلى من تكلنا إلى بعيد ملكته أمرنا أم إلى عدو يتجهمنا إن لم يكن بك غضب علينا فلا نبالي غير أن عافيتك هي أوسع لنا نعوذ بنور وجهك الذي أشرقت له الظلمات وصلح عليه أمر الدنيا والآخرة أن يحل بنا سخطك أو أن ينزل بنا غضبك لك العتب حتى ترضى ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك